Hey, it's Pastor Dudley Rutherford, Senior Pastor of Shepherd Church in Porter Ranch, California, which is a suburb up there, up there in Los Angeles, California. And uh, we have a podcast called Godly Goosebumps that you're listening to this very moment. And I just want to say thank you for hitting that subscribe button. It really helps us out if you'll do that. And then week after week, you'll, you'll be the first uh, to be notified of a new story that has dropped. And the purpose of this podcast is to tell stories, and just stories that, that lead you to believe and to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is in charge of every area of our life. And the purpose is to share this to give you hope in case you're listening and you're in a, you're in a situation or the next time you're in a situation where you begin to doubt, the next time you're in trouble, the next time you start to think that maybe God is not listening to me, to just know that God is sovereign, that he's omnipotent, that he's omnipresent, that he knows all, that he sees all, and that he's involved in every area of our life. And when he shows up, when he shows up, Uh, that all the credit is going to be due to him because no one else can do what he just did. I I call this podcast The Miracle at Johns Hopkins. There's a verse in the Bible, and if you've ever been sick or if you go through a season of sickness or you know someone who's sick, you need to have them pick up the Bible and read James chapter 5. James chapter 5. James is a, he's a brother of Jesus. He came along after Jesus, but he was there, and he was, he was a part of seeing all that took place. And James writes in his book, James 5.14, Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil, which of course is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want to tell you today's story. Craig Brian Larson, he's the editor of Preaching Today, which is a magazine uh, that has a lot to do with preaching and what's going on in our world uh, spiritually today. But Craig witnessed the remarkable and well-attested power of prayer in the life of a fellow pastor by the name of Kenneth Wallace of Central Illinois. Craig describes Kenneth as a happy, big voice, thick build, square jawed, always with a toothy smile. But one day in November, some discomfort in the area of his prostate sent him to see his physician thinking he was going to receive a prescription for what he assumed was an infection of some sort, the doctor instead gave him some very bad news, that a large malignant tumor had formed on his prostate gland. In fact, it was so large that it had probably been there for more than 10 years. And on a scale of one to four, with four being the worst, he was a four. A specialist in Springfield, Illinois, And doctors at Johns Hopkins University determined determined that the chemotherapy would be useless, that surgery would be too dangerous, and that radiation would cause too many other problems. The cancer was terminal, was the report. They could only give Kenneth medication for pain. Soon his weight dropped from 217 pounds down to 138 pounds. Kenneth decided to attend one last statewide meeting of pastors. And in that meeting, his fellow pastors gathered around him and cried out to heaven on his behalf. And as he headed home later that night, he was encouraged by their concern, but he was still suffering from unbearable pain. Two months later, his brother, who was also a pastor, visited him at his home. Kenneth was so worn down by the pain that he told his wife and his brother, he said, I want you to ask God to either heal me or take me. I I would say a lot of people get to that point in life where they reach this place of despair 
where no doctor has an answer. And they say, God, either heal me or take me. I'm going to say that prayer is more common than what we think. And Kenneth was at that point. And so they prayed. They prayed over Kenneth. Lord, either heal him or take him. And then they left. And as Kenneth was lying on that couch, he says in his own words, he became aware of a physical sensation that he described as a soothing, warm feeling going throughout his entire body. And he says that every single bit of pain and discomfort totally left his body. He tried to sit up, but he was still very weak. Calling out to his wife, Anne, he said, Jesus just healed me. He didn't take his usual pain medication or sleeping pill that night before going to bed, yet for the first time in six months, he fell asleep immediately and he slept all night long. And at his next doctor's appointment a week later, Kenneth's doctors were shocked when they saw him. They ordered some tests. The tests were sent to John Hopkins University, and the results came back completely negative. Kenneth Wallace was perfectly healed. He lived for many more years, pastoring his church for a total of 40 years. Now, whether God worked through the passionate prayers of godly men at that statewide conference, or maybe he worked through the prayers of his brother and his wife, or maybe he answered Kenneth's, Kenneth's prayer himself, Kenneth was miraculously restored. Can somebody say amen? Does that give you goosebumps or what? Does that send a chill up your spine or what? His story and the many others too numerous to detail here are a powerful reminder that God indeed hears the prayers of his people. James again says, If anyone among you sick, let him call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And James also says that the prayer of a righteous man is both powerful and effective. Oh, I want to say that to you again. The prayers of a righteous man are both powerful and and effective. I say to you, if you're sick today, to cry out to the name of the Lord. Read James chapter 5. See what, it, see what kind of prayer. The Bible says the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Find you a group of godly people who truly are righteous, who serve and live and have faith and Almighty God in God's power, have them anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord. And I say to you right now, if you're sick, if you're broken, if you need healing in your life, cry out to the name of the Lord. His name is Jesus. Just say his name, Jesus. Say it over and over and over again. In the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, in the power of Jesus, the comfort of Jesus, the healing of Jesus, in the blessing of Jesus, I pray his name over you. You need a miracle? Turn to him. God, I believe, can heal you in a moment's notice. Now, sometimes he, he doesn't. Sometimes he, he heals us in glory. Amen. My dad was sick for many years at age 87. Just a couple of years ago, he went from this life to the next. And on that day when he passed from this life to the next, I was there. And I saw this broken, diseased body of his where he had been battling Parkinson's and cancer, bladder cancer and just getting old. He passed from this life to the next, and on that day, the Lord completely healed him. He's up there in heaven today doing somersaults, where before he couldn't get his shoes on without 
people helping them for 20 minutes. So there's all kinds of healings. There's all kinds of prayers. But I pray today as you hear the story of Kenneth, how God healed him, that God can heal you today if that's his will. Turn to God. Send us your stories, godlygoosebumps.com. Just go to that website. It's very, very easy. You just go to that website. There's a banner up the top that says, tell us your story. And we'll read your story here on this podcast. Give us a follow up Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. And week after week, you'll be encouraged by stories that only God can orchestrate. God bless you for listening to Godly Goosebumps. <music>